So if you want to prosper, then you must understand this. God is not the author of confusion. You are. God did not create this confusion. We created this confusion with our own thoughts, our own minds, and thinking that we could do things a better way, thinking we could do things outside of the truth, thinking we could do things fast. Anything that you want to get that's fast is probably not going to last long. So let me help you understand where the confusion shows up. The confusion shows up in people. You see, there are people in your life who don't belong. There are people in your life who you met a long time ago, and that was just for a season or a reason. But you have decided to make these people be a part of your life for a lifetime, and they are causing confusion. I want you to start to look at your life like a theatrical production that it can become. You get to write the script with God's vision and with God's divine timing. You get to dictate what you want your life to be. So in this theatrical production, there are people who need to be in the balcony. That's right. There are some folks who need to be in a balcony. Now in the balcony, you can't see them, but they can still see you shine. They're way up there in the nosebleed seats. And every time you make a move, every time you make a prosperity statement, every time you uh, gain a win, every time you achieve one of your goals, they can see you way up there, but you cannot see them. And you don't need to see them because they are a distraction. They are a reminder. They cultivate uh, you know, reactions. You may have post-traumatic stress syndrome when you see these people. You might get irritated, nervous, upset. You become angry. You get anxious. Those people need to be in the balcony. Let them see you shine. You don't have to get mad at them. You don't have to say, well, I'm putting you in a balcony. Don't make an announcement. That's not cool. Anybody who's talking about calling you, well, I'm not your friend, baby, hang up the phone because that is ignorant and it is also immature. You don't have to say a word. See, prosperity is about flowing. Prosperity is about being cool. And you don't have to say what you're going to do or how you're going to cut somebody off in, in order for it to happen. Just do it. And don't do it with bad energy. Don't do it. Don't go calling and telling a whole bunch of people. Now, you might want to pray. You might want to talk to God about it. You might want to journal and write about it. But don't make a big announcement. Now, the second set of people, so some people need to go in the balcony, all right? The second set of people don't get a ticket at all, okay? There are some folks in your life who, is, who have caused you stress, strain, uh, uh, anguish, uh, some that you have probably downright wanted to take out. You know how your parents tell you, I brought you in this world. I'll take you out, right? There are some people in your life like that and you don't need to give them a ticket at all. Cut them off. How do you cut them off? No communication, period. And once again, prosperity requires an energy that is easy, that is flowing. There are people that I know that I see them today or walking down the street. I just keep on walking. There is no energy at all. I don't get mad. I don't get happy. I don't get sad. It just is what it is. There is no energy there. There is no ticket to my life. You don't get a seat in the front row, the middle row, the back row, the balcony. You are not in the building. So you need to be able to define these people and you need to, the strength to cut them off. The last group of people are going to be in the front row. Okay. These are the people who are down for you. They are the ride or dies. You know, I got the ride or die fever for most people in my life, but unless you break a law, okay? Now, if you break a law, you're on your own. Do not call Lynn Richardson and don't think I'm about to start lying for you, okay? So I'm your ride or die. I'm there with you. As long as you are doing what is legal and right and ethical and moral, then I'm on your team. So you need those people. You need to know who those cheerleaders are. It might be your grandma. Grandma B was one of my biggest front row seat, but until I got on the Steve Harvey show and started going on TV, she gonna tell one of my aunties, yeah, Lynn, I got so sophisticated. <laughs> I just figured Grandma B just didn't really like me being all high and glamorous. As a matter of fact, in her last days, she didn't recognize me if I was all made up. I had to come to her place where she lived in the assisted living facility. And I had to come with my plain face, wig off, you know, all of that other kind of stuff. But nonetheless, she always was and she always will be. Rest in peace, Grandma B. She will always be in my front seat. My husband is in my front seat. Uh, is in the front seat. My children are in the front seat. Uh, some of my uh, business partners and friends are in the front seat. Who's in the front row seat of your life? That's who you give your attention to. These people might be your why. These be, might be the people who uh, give you a reason to wake up every day, to thrive, to grow. These are the people who are cooperating. 
These are the people who are cheering. These are the people who are supporting you. These are the people when my when I needed to get to uh, Russell Simmons event for the first time with Dr. Benjamin Chavis and Felicia Butterfield, my godmother in the front seat. I didn't have any money. I was bankrupt. The economy had crashed in 2008. And guess what? She gave me a credit card and let me charge everything I needed. My red carpet dress, my plane ticket, my hotel. That's the front seat. And she is still riding with me today. Who's in your front seat? Some of those people, you may not talk to them every day. You see, in order for somebody to be in your front seat, they got to be cool. Remember, I said prosperity is about flowing. It is about being cool. It is about submission. I don't talk to these people every day. I don't talk to these people every week. Sometimes I don't talk to some of these people who are in the front row of my life. I may not talk to them for a, a month, a, a year, a half a year. And guess what? When we speak again, when we speak again, it's like no time has ever passed. We pick up right where we left off. They're not saying, well, I haven't heard from you. I know you haven't heard from me because I didn't. I know because I wouldn't participate in anything. Don't you hate when somebody call you and say, I haven't heard from you? Don't you know that I know that you haven't heard from me? Because if you had heard from me, I would have been there to know it. So I don't need you to tell me. You see, all of that, that is the back, the balcony. Those are the balcony people. They might not get a ticket at all. Let me help you understand something about people. When people show you who they are, believe them. Uh, if it looks like a dog, if it barks like a dog, it's a dog. Stop trying to make it a cat. Stop trying to make it a fish. Stop trying to make it something else. When people show you who they are, believe them. God is not the author of confusion. You are. And you're going to have confusion in your life if you do not learn how to put people in the right seat in the theatrical production of your life. The next place where you're going to have confusion is other people's problems. Other people's problems. Let me help you understand something. We have chosen to survive beyond 2020. That means it is time to thrive. So if you have people in your life and you chit chat on the phone or on Zoom or you talking to them FaceTime and they still talking to you about the same problems that they had before the pandemic. And now it is uh, almost at the end, the middle. We don't know if there's a second uh, wave coming or whatever. But the whole point is we made it out of 2020 and they still talking about the problems they had in 2016. Mm -mm. They still talking about the problems they had in 2014. Mm -mm. They still talking about the problems that they had in 1962. Mm -mm. Let me help you understand something. Misery loves company. And some people are intrigued by their own problems. Some people live on their own problems. Some people thrive on their own problems. Some people get nourished and fed and motivated by their own problems. Because some people take a problem and they turn it into an attention grabber. So they say to themselves, if I could talk about how my man left me, if I could talk about how this person did me wrong, if I could talk about my problem, if I could talk about how they laid me off, if I can just keep talking about that, I'll have an audience. You see, these people are too afraid to move. They're too afraid to get to the next level. They are too afraid to do what it takes to put themselves in a position where that pain no longer impacts their lives. And so now they invite you to the pain. Let me help you understand something. Jesus died on a Friday and rose on a Sunday. So I tell everybody, you got three days, okay? Now, on that first day, you can cry. You can get some ice cream. You can go eat some pizza. Heck, you can eat the whole refrigerator if you want to. You can snuffle, sneeze. You can call me. Now, if we go out to eat, it's going to be a business meal, okay? Because I'm going to try to figure out how we're going to, in a business manner, resolve your issues so I can write that off. But the whole point is, on that first day, you get to cry. On the second day, okay, now you need to start coming back to life. But on the third day, you need to run. Rise. I'm not going to deal with your same problem from six months ago, from two years ago. Now, of course, if it's something um, that is major, if it's someone in your life that has um, a life uh, threatening illness or something like that, of course, you maintain that. During Grandma B's last days, we had to make sure she was to make, make sure she was taken care of. But you know what I'm talking about? I'm talking about other people's problems. Your homegirl, your friend, your cousin, your sister still calling you talking about her baby daddy. Keep leaving it coming back. As my friend MJ Harris says, he can't come back to a closed door. Why you keep opening the door? Why you keep letting somebody who means you no good, who thinks nothing of you, who leaves you high and dry, why you keep letting them come back in your life? 
Why you keep letting your entitled, over entitled, under prepared, under uh, worked, under everything children, why are you continuing to let them run you? Why are you continuing to try to prove to your children that you are now the parent that you couldn't be? Let me help you tell, let me help you understand something about my kids. Let me help you understand what I told them. First of all, I ain't got to raise you. You don't have to raise your kids, okay? You can leave your kids with a grandmama, a sister, a cousin, a sorority member. You can leave your kids with somebody else to raise. So what I said to my kids is this. I did the best that I could with what I had at the time. All right. Now, God has forgiven me and we got to move on. Now, that doesn't mean I'm cocky or arrogant and that I'm not apologetic for whatever mistakes I made. But let me help you understand something. You are not going to hold me hostage as a parent. Same thing with my parents. My mother, she went through a lot before I got here and after I got here. My father went through a lot before I got here and after I got here. And guess what? I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm not going to keep talking about those problems. I'm not going to keep talking about what I experienced as a kid over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. Those were bad ingredients in my life. But at the end of the day, you got some bad ingredients that don't taste so well in your sweet potato pie. Okay, your sweet potato pie, it has vanilla extract and cinnamon. You cannot swallow vanilla extract. It tastes nasty. You cannot eat a teaspoon of cinnamon. You might choke to death. Or you might literally choke to death. Okay, but you need the cinnamon and the vanilla extract extract in the sweet potato pie in order to get the sweet potato recipe. So my life is like a sweet potato pie. I may have had some bad ingredients, but guess what? I am still good. So you need to be around those kind of people who look at their problems that way. If they are still calling you with the same problems, the same problems pre-pandemic, and they got the same problems that are not related to the pandemic, post-pandemic, mm -mm, okay? You cannot prosper like that. So the last thing that will keep you in confusion is your pocket, your pocketbook, or your purse, wherever you keep your money. If you cannot get your money under control, you cannot prosper. You see, the Bible says, he who is faithful with little will be faithful with much. He who is unfaithful with little will be unfaithful with much. It says, who can be trusted with true riches if you can't even handle unrighteous money? Money ain't even righteous. Money is just a resource. Money is just a tool. I've said to you so many times, money will work harder for you than you can ever work for it. You just have to give money permission to do so by honoring it and respecting it. And you cannot prosper if you cannot control money. One plus one equals two. I've said it before. If your stuff adds up to 10, it'll never get into two. Never, ever get into two, okay? So you've got to track your spending. You have got to close out this marching order season, um, this next level season, this post-pandemic season, this beyond 2020 season. You have got to approach prosperity like you have never approached it before. You have to have a new mind. You have to have a new mindset. You have to have new people. You have to have new strategies. Let me help you understand something. I am blessed and highly favored, but the things that I did to get here are not going to get me there. The things that I did to get to this level are not going to be the things that are going to get me to the next level. So you may have achieved a certain amount of success. You may be comfortable, but let me help you understand something. Don't stay in a comfort zone, especially as it relates to your finances, to your pocket, your pocketbook, or your purse. Do not accept the fact that you will always have to struggle with money. It doesn't have to be. I already told you, don't spend your stimulus money on a whole bunch of stupid stuff. Now, many of you said, okay, I'm not. Some of you said, well, I don't care. I'm going to be broke anyway. So I'm about to go get me some crab legs. I'm about to go get me a Gucci bag. Come on now. You sound crazy. You sound crazy. Okay. And I understand that you don't believe that anything can be different for you, for you. But I am telling you, I was born and raised in the projects. I grew up with a grandmother who only had an eighth grade education. I went to college and failed miserably in many areas of my college experience, including how I dealt with money. I became an adult and spent more money than I had. It was living check to Monday, living check to two o'clock, living check to yesterday. Okay. Check the two o'clock. You get paid at eight o'clock in the morning. By two o'clock, it's gone. Check the yesterday. Before you got paid, you was broke. And after you got paid, you were still broke. Okay, I've lived all of that. So if I can do it, you can do it. Do not accept your pocket, pocketbook, or purse as a staple of confusion in your life forever. It is time for you to prosper. God is not the author of confusion. 
You are. We create the confusion. And if there, are com if there is confusion in the people, in other people's problems, and in your pocket, your pocketbook or your purse, it is time for you to check yourself so you can better yourself and prosper. Go to asklen.org. I am waiting for you. I am believing in you. And more importantly, I am standing with you. And guess what? I'm in the front row seat. I'll see you at asklen.org.